Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 30 of Whitling's Prototype. <clears throat> Today, I've been thinking about this a lot in my spare time, and I'm wondering what am I going to do? <laughs> there are so many options, and I feel like none of them are good. <clears throat> so I'm going to try and do some talking, and let's see if we can break down the problem. So let's list the things that we know we need. Um, we know that there is going to be a selected cube. And we don't know which cubes um, we could call this maybe which potential neighbors should be accessible. We also need to figure out And this this one just sucks. Which neighbors slash non neighbors should we fade? <clears throat> but now that we know that these these two questions need to be solved, I believe that this gives us a slight edge. And the real edge is that I have no idea what's going to be good. <clears throat> no clue. But this does mean that we could be we maybe could architect the code in a way which makes it easy to change these functions. Yeah, we'll say easy to combine and modify. Hmm, and this feels like one of those things that's just going to need a lot of testing. Like, we're going to need a lot of levels and specific seeds recorded so that we can go through and make sure that these edge cases are right. Because there's a lot of cases we got going on here. So, <clears throat> we also need to know... When to fade during a rotation. And should some cubes stay faded? It's going to be weird if we begin a rotation and the cube fades out and then fades back again <clears throat> because that rotation also, I don't know if that's mathematically possible. But it's a good it's a good thing to think about and test. So I guess the first thing we need to figure out is which cubes can be accessed by our selected cube. What are some valid paths so this one in the middle this is going to be our selected but you know there's a little bit of a problem there because 
Um, cubes can also, you know, select to, oh, you know, they can connect to something like this one too. <clears throat> and in theory, there's one below here that this middle selected cube can connect to. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of considering You know it would be really cool Instead of fading these cubes out, because, first of all, my fade looks not great. That's something that we can fix later with art. But, maybe it would be super cool if this was our camera, and we just had, like, a render mask. Well, it would be in the center of the screen. A render mask that would just cut through all of the cubes. Like maybe... We definitely want to be able to see the whole cube. All of the faces that are still shown by the... level. But yeah, maybe we could just not render any of, it, any of that. And, you know, maybe, like, blur the edges around this render shape here. Hmm. That seems a lot easier. <laughs> it's like just the selected cube. Anything in between the cube and the camera is not going to be rendered. You know, we could be up against some big old cubes right here. This is not to scale. But this should be drawn out, or this should be hidden. This is not something that I've done before, so I'm interested to think about how we're gonna do it. I do believe that a render mask is something along the lines of what we need, but I don't... Yeah, I have not done that before. I might need to do some research before we get going on this one. Hmm, okay. So if we're going to pause on our camera, let's see, what else did we have in our camera list? Follow mode, following the whittling. I'm not sure about this one still. I think we decided to keep 45 degrees, that's nice. Zoom level is good, we ignored camera commands for input. Rotate camera around focus, so let's mark these. Center on selected. Camera relative rotations. 45 degrees. Zoom level. Oh, man. Yeah, this follow mode might be real bad. <clears throat> so we can't just do an over-the-shoulder attachment. That's not going to work. Because if we think of a side view... 
And our little dude is walking with the camera over his shoulder here. As soon as he hits this wall, oh, drawing sideways is even harder than drawing regular ways. Um, the camera is going to be in here. <clears throat> and that's going to look quite bad. This one is a lot easier to fade stuff out, though, because we can just draw a direct line from our camera to our whittling, and if there's anything in front of the whittling, then fade that thing out. Let's try it. That seems like something worth trying. I mean, we got the fade out. It'd be a shame not to use it. Oh, that's one more thing that I realized. I was taking a look at this and I thought, I was testing it out and I was like, that's a little bit weird. Well, that's really weird. First of all, that pop disappear. I am not a big fan of that. But I also realized that our path walls, oh, this is just our material, no. goes down to point 0.1. See, it's very strange. I was testing this and I put it at 0. And so you would assume... Well, I should do that on the main cube, right? Resources, prefabs. Point 0.1, let's move this to 0. So you would assume with 0 alpha that this is going to disappear. Ooh. Oh boy, that looked terrible. But for some reason, what is going on there? This mesh renderer has a path wall instance. The transparency is 0. 0.0001. But I can still see you. Hmm. Let's see what happens if we. Where was that? That's our cube fader. Let's do an end ease. And I'm going to copy this. And what do we want this to be? Oh, you know. Hmm. This feels a little bit hacky. What is that called? Fade Ease. Oops. Well, whatever. Let's just do zero for now. <laughs> Transparency for everything in this mesh render index. And our shader isn't doing anything funny either. We're just setting the alpha to the transparency. Oh, maybe that A was also giving us some issues. Oh! Ah, end semicolon after lambdas. Let's set this up just in case somebody happens to wander by. <laughs> mm. 
Well, there's one thing that I definitely want to change, <clears throat> and that is I want to enable multi-edit mode on our cube face spawners. That is in our editor. Can edit multiple objects. There we go. So let's turn Okay, let's turn all of these off, test fade off, and let's just test this one here. Oh, you know, that's something we haven't done yet. <clears throat> we also haven't done our flip. Hmm. But this is just so bizarre. Let's go back to our cube fader. And let's print a nice curve output. What's going on here? A little bit strange that it's over one. I find that bizarre. But it does seem to be decreasing at a regular rate. So why does it look so goofy? Cube 8, cube core material. Let's watch the transparency here. Oh, come on. Okay. Pause. Go. Unpause. What? Oh, now? What? Where do we fill out this mesh renderers? Get components in children. Yeah, we can't add to this array. Let's get crazy with it. On end, let's destroy mesh renderers at renderer index. My guess is that the core component renderer is not going to disappear because it's technically not a child. Aha. Uh -huh. For some reason, its alpha is still almost zero. Zero enough? I don't know, that looks pretty cool. In fact, that looks really cool.
But it does mean that we never destroyed the mesh renderers. Oh, can't remove mesh renderer because script depends on it. Who depends on mesh renderers? Let's do a control shift F for fire component type of mesh renderer. Selectable requires it. Did it tell me that? Dang it! <laughs> okay. So selectable requires this. Can't remove it. That's fine. But it does actually prove me wrong in the fact that all of these mesh renderers are in this array here. Render index, material float. Transparency is going from one to zero. So what's with that pop? That is very strange. Let's do like a, let's go to the original cube and let's do like a 10 second fade. So these are going away, and then boom! Maybe it has something to do with the shader. Let's try turning Z right off. See what we get. That looks so bad. So the transparency is going down. Instead of the drastic plan, let's just turn it off instead. Instead of destroying it completely, because that is <clears throat> not as easily irreversible. Still with the pop. You know. Oh, hey, wow. Now it's gone for real. That also looks pretty darn terrible. I don't want to have to fade out my cube path faces either. That's really funny. So I can still select these. Uh, 
Oh boy. Let's see if he plays nicely. Well, that's always comforting. When you're not, when something you're working on is not playing nicely, I recommend double checking old stuff that you're pretty sure is working fine. However, be warned, this can be equally depressing because something you think that you had fixed is currently still broken. Luckily, this time, we got off scot-free. So, let's see, what's going wrong? There's so many pieces that are not working right here. Let's list them out. We didn't even get to follow mode. <laughs> We're still working on fading. So let's see. Fading is inconsistent. Let's test it on just the center cube instead of all of the children. Get components one. That 10 second bit is a little bit too long. There it goes. Just bam. Hmm. How much time? 30 minutes about. So this seems like it's a difference in materials, which is crazy. Path wall material. It's got a custom fade shader and a color. No texture. How about cube core material? Oh, this couldn't be a metallic smoothness thing. No way. Let's try it out. Smoothness 0.5. Metallic zero. That still looked pretty bad, but it looked better, honestly. What the heck? Yeah, maybe we're doing something wrong with our standard surface shader. So I added alpha to the pragma. If I do this using forward render, it does not render at all. Do, 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 do. Turn Z right off. For transparent stuff, we tried that. Try changing your material to use a different shader, doesn't matter which one. That would be rich. This is a slow fade now. It does disappear too early. You can actually see here that the it disappears at like 0 0.1, which is quite a long time before it should. Is that a bug with our easing utility? 
update if it's using add if timer is less than duration I'm kind of tempted to uh, maybe just pass duration here. Hmm. There's nothing suspect about this. I do think the shader Turned a bit funky looking though. Where's cube eight? Let's do like a three seconds. Still with the pop. Although I do remember watching a video the other day by a man with the name Squirrel. And he said that alpha is not linear to people. So let's try that. By alpha is not linear to people, he says that it is a an illusion that something with 50% alpha has much more than something with 25% alpha. That still looks pretty darn bad. <laughs> Yeah, you can see the pop pop of the, the cube going out. Let's make it a regular fade time. And that's just a pop. One second, that looked great. What's my performance looking like? Am I doing anything crazy here? Whoa. I mean, nothing too crazy. A fair bit of memory going, but I am running a bunch of stuff. That's not going to do it. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> It does look pretty sweet being able to see through this, but can't keep it. I mean, unless we had some crazy ice texture and like a uh, MC Escher. I mean, this game is kind of MC Escher esque. What about a good old classic? Good old classic linear curve. Not the best linear, but it is a line. Ugh. Yeah, something feels wrong about that. Is it possibly because I am running this shader on all my other cubes?
<gasps> oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> it was the testing code. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know. It's almost always your fault. Get components in children. Hmm, not bad. Let's do this curve here. Two seconds is still quite a long time for a fade. But you know, that looks better. What's a point one look like? Oh! Oh, that's right, when we end it, we're turning off the meshes. Let's... Oh! You know... Transform ease, I might, I'm going to do it. I'm going to pass the actual value to this. So let's see, on end ease. Which means that we're going to have to do some change in So, this should break nearly everything. Let's just look for an on end ease plus equals. And you know, we don't actually have to use this. Because with these ones, we already know the begin and the end. Is that it? On rotate complete. Oh boy, and the cascade begins. Not a big fan of this. Okay, we need to take a step back. 
That was too much changing for not enough bonus. We're back here. You're angry about that. That's fine. Let's go back to our camera controller. Good. Let's go back to our transform ease. Okay, now I think everything's happening. So let's just return curve evaluate one. Because there's only one spot we needed that. There's no reason to go through and stomp all over the rest of our code just to make one darn line happy. That's not happy. But now. Oh! Excuse me. Let's see. Now all we need to do is call our fade ease get final curve value. Hey! Happy times are here again. So now it should go down to point one, which I think looks just darn nice. Like, I can still see through it, kind of. It gives like a little, no, it doesn't actually give a visual, what's the word I'm looking for? Ooh. Illusion! Illusion! That's the word I seek. But I do like how this completely bisects and then follows the path there. That's some nice math. So let's see, what are we doing? We're getting a little bit close. And what have we done? Well, we fixed fade. Fade looks better. I'm going to turn off shadows on this center cube piece, too. I don't think we need those. Oh, right. None of these are actually... None of these are actually prefabs anymore. <clears throat> That's a problem. So I could, like, even with an update faces, it doesn't update my cubes. Hmm. <laughs> I could just turn cast shadows off on all of these. Sure. <laughs> Who needs prefabs when they don't work? Let's try, what was the timing fade on that? Really? Real? Uh, 
That looks pretty good. Do one second test fade on. <clears throat> I think that looks pretty darn cool. And you know the interesting part about this is... Oh. Well... With this solution, we are still facing the problem of selecting which cubes to turn off. But I do believe maybe we should just turn on any cube that is directly connected to it. Ugh, oof. So many issues with that. <laughs> okay, still looking good. Go up the wall. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I think one of the main problems is this yellow selection thing we got going here. But we could actually change it. We don't need to... highlight the actual path the ground here i mean we could do a prettier shader effect like a, a wireframe or something like that kind of glowy thing I wonder, I wonder would it be cool if everything in that 3x3 three three thing I was talking about earlier just faded in and everything else faded out. So you got like a Rubik's Cube size of world to always focus on, but everything else was, oh geez. And what about ignoring mouse clicks? Because if we're here, I want to be able to click on this one behind it. And that's not the case there. It bears thinking about. We've got a lot of things to do here. I always thought this camera work was going to be the hardest part, um, but I'm only a little bit of time into this project, so I'm pretty happy with where things are. We've got our cubes fading out nicely, so let's call it for today. We didn't actually select any cubes to fade. I might change that name, but I think that's it for me. I hope you all have a good day, and I'll see you tomorrow.